where the Lord lay. The drama department shared something very remarkable, timely, and relevant for the season. And it, it, it sent a call back to us that it's a time for us to realign back ourselves to God. It's time for us to surrender back ourselves to Him. It, it was very, um, it, it seemed funny, but where we see the, 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 the character in the drama coming back over and over again. Over and over again. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms that as far east half is the, the, the east is from the west. That is how much is mercy. That's how large, how great it is towards us. I just want us to be cautious of the season we find ourselves today and rededicate our, by ourselves back to heaven. Those things, it looks as if we've been taking the grace of God for granted over, over and over again. We find ourselves falling short. There is something that there is a significance of that took place on the resurrection morning. There was a power that was released the resurrecting power the power that enables the power that that helps you to stay righteous to stay holy the power that helps you to remain aligned the power that stretch out hands of forgiveness mercy towards us of the prodigal son waiting for us to find back our track waiting for us to find back our way back to you. lord we tap into that resurrecting power this morning and all we are asking is we have come before your throne we have come before your throne the throne the gate that does not turn us away but has opened forth the arms stretched towards us lord we ask that you help us we ask that you forgive us we ask that you equip us we ask that you energize us we ask that you help us to be able to attain heights in the spirit our father in heaven we thank you once again for this morning Thank you for your help thus far. Thank you for the Bible says in the book of Romans that he that did not hold back, did not spare his own son. Is there anything that you will not give unto us freely? Father, we thank you for releasing, for not sparing your only son. We thank you for what has been, has been made available to us. We thank you for what does this stand to be present. We thank you that we are not celebrating just the sufferings and the pain of the event, but the purpose is significant of it. Lord, we return your, the glory to your holy name. Lord, we've come again before your throne. We are asking that once again we surrender all. Once again you release, the, release upon us the power for us to remain aligned, the power for us to remain holy, the power for us to remain on this race, the power for us not to look back, the power for us to walk in the power of your resurrection. Father, we thank you. Once again, release your mercy, release your grace upon us. By ourselves, we can do nothing. I pray every reason we've come to this place today, as your word have established it, that you that did not hold back your only son, is there anything that you will not give unto us freely? Lord, whatever may be the desires of our heart, as we have come here today, we ask that we would receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you take over, take charge. I have the words of my own. I ask once again, release yourself. Release yourself upon every one of us. Help us to have an encounter with you. Speak to us expressly. Help us to run in line with what you are going to be doing today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your name be exalted. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 
Amen and amen. Let's be seated. Thank you once again, choir. May God continually enrich you, increase you, enlarge you, and uphold you in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, happy Easter to every one of us. Happy Easter to every one of us. Thank you, sir. I will share from the word of God something very briefly that God inspired in my heart. Or I would, if I go further, I want to appreciate a pastor, another person, but Pastor Tuashe Olaji for the opportunity, for the platform, for the help thus far. May God continually equip and increase you, sir, in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. I'll read from verse 8. We are troubled on every side. If we are there, Second Corinthians 4. I read from verse. I read from verse 8. I think I'll go down to verse 18. I'll go down to 18, about 10 verses there. I'll read a bit fast because of our time. I would want us to go through it with me. Second Corinthians 4, 8, down to the end. We are troubled on every side, yet not dis distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For which, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might throw the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Let me take verse 16 and 17 again. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. It's a... Um, long reading, but it summarizes what we'll be sharing this morning. A um, few days ago, when I was pondering on what to share, the word that um, dropped in my heart was, cast down, not forsaken. Cast down, not forsaken. And um, it took me another day or two to understand the fact that actually today is an Easter Sunday and the question that came to heart that what is the relationship with that, with Easter? And um, there's 
seven sayings or there are seven messages or lessons that we can pick from Jesus why he was on the cross. And Easter is a very significant day because it stands for us to, it, it explains why we are here, why we do the things we do, why we still believe, why we are still in the race, why we are still running, why we still have hope, why we still have hope. I will share some, some lessons or some messages from Jesus while he was on the cross, and we'll pick one or two things from there. They call it the last saints of Jesus while he was on the cross, or the last saints of Jesus before, before he died. In Luke 23, 34, and we, we, it was picked from various accounts of the gospel, in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I believe these words or these things or these statements are familiar with us. Today, the second one, today shall thou be with me in paradise. We see that in Luke 23, 43. Woman, behold thy son. I, I won't go further to explain, but as I'm giving us the Bible verse, because the goal is for us to the messages of all the, the saints of the cross, they were, and they are, these were one of the powerful saints of Jesus. When we analyze each of those things, he said before he passed on, we see that everything he was doing is where I encapsulated in those saints. My God, my God, why how hast thou forsaken me? We see that in Mark 15, 34. John 19, 28. I test. As the fifth one. John 19.30, it is finished. And Luke 23.46, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The only one we'll focus on today is the one that we may not like the most. Because we want to hear it is finished. And once we as Christ has died and risen, every, everything we want is at our, is, it has been made available to us. But, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. When we look at the life of Jesus, there are, there are many things that are worthy of note. And we ask ourselves, um, Jesus, with all, how close he is to the Father, with all the scriptures he knows, he understands, God will not forsake us, will not leave us, he will always be with us. This, this was a very firm statement made by Jesus towards his end. Why hast thou forsaken me? And as Christians, when we look at the life of Jesus, he gives us an idea of a guide on how to live. Of even the things we are going to face in the future. He gives us a little idea, okay, when this comes, this is the response, this is the reaction. The life of Jesus depicts the, the guide or the manual or the map for a today Christian. Amen? Now, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, it is important when we know God from, or it's sweet, let me paraphrase, it's sweet and enjoyable when we know God from a place of comfort from a place of God has answered my prayers, from a place of whatever I want is, 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 is at my, is, it's, it's, I have it, from a place of everything about me is sweetness, is joy, is peace, is enjoyment, everything is going well. And amazingly, most of us know God from that dimension, from that revelation, from that understanding. But there's another part of knowing God through his sufferings through his sufferings. And this is the one that is not very sweet. Through where we are faithful, we are, we are believing, we are strong, we are committed, but still it seems as if we are forsaken. 
And that was a plea of Jesus. Why have thou forsaken me? I don't know if you've ever, you've ever been in a point of your life where everything is going pretty good and then there is now a, a, there is now a sudden downturn. Or whereby you are looking towards something, you are preparing towards something, you are anticipating something, and you are so hopeful. Your faith is, is, is firm, is strong, and it's just like everything, your hope, your faith, is just, your, your hope, your faith, everything is just crashed. Your faith in God is tried, your hope is tested. And then you ask the question, although I'm faithful, but forsaken. The message for this morning is the revelation of Christ through his sufferings. The revelation of Christ through his sufferings. And I'll try to list some few things to broaden this understanding. From the text we read in 2 Corinthians 4, from verse 8, is something that we should, and this message may not be, um, is everyone here that this message may be relevant for, or it may be relevant to. But I tell you, if it's not relevant to you today, keep it for the future. Because a time will come. We would speak the saying of Paul in Philippians 3.10 where he says that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, which is sweet and good because the power makes certain things achievable, doable. But more than that, the fellowship of his sufferings. The fellowship of his sufferings. Amen. There are times where we would, God will reveal himself through unpleasant situations, things we least expect. And I'm stressing on the fact that although you are faithful, although you are committed, but well then it looks like you have been forsaken. And Jesus was a typical example to illustrate this. When we look at Jesus, a perfect example blameless, spotless. But why has thou forsaken me? Was one of the statements or sins he made towards his death and then further on his resurrection. Sometimes knowing God can be true disappointment, hardship, loss and pain. But actually, this is actually the true test. This is actually the true test. Let's look at the book of Job chapter 2 verse 10. Some things, some sufferings for Christ may even shake our very foundation of our faith. Check the very foundation of our faith. It can even Doubt every scripture we think we know. The revelation of Christ through his suffering. Job chapter 2 verse 10. Hear what Job said. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Words, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. I'm not here to bring a sad news to you or a bad news that um, expect evil things from God. But I'm saying there is a revelation of Christ that we can only achieve, we can only get, we can only know and understand through his suffering. A songwriter once sang that helped me to suffer the sufferings of the cross. Help me to suffer the sufferings of the cross. Faithful, but forsaken. And some of these moments, doubts begin to sprout within us. And we begin to question everything we think we know. What I'm trying to do this morning is just to give us a little strength and encouragement for those days. Because as the life of Jesus depicts, there is a power of the resurrection, but also there is a fellowship of his suffering. And this was what Paul 
wanted to know, that I may know, that I may know. Let me understand. Show me the power, but also help me to suffer the sufferings. There are a few things I will share with us, or typical instances, illustrations from scriptures on what God tries to, how God tries to reveal himself to us in our hardship, in our disappointment, in our pain, in our loss, in our suffering. How God reveals himself to us. And I'll go through them quickly. The first one is that he reveals a name to us. He reveals a name. And I'll share a story we, we all know in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 16. The story about the three Hebrew boys. There was something quite striking there. Let's, let's, let, me read, let me take one or two points from there. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, the, uh, something worthy of note is that these three guys, they were fully assured or let me paraphrase that, they knew God would save them, but they made provision for if he did not save us, we would still not bow. Now, I believe as they believed God would have saved them, they, they approximated and assumed, okay, fine, you would, I mean, the, how the saving was going to come was not made known. But something was revealed at the end of that story. That is why I'm saying sometimes through our suffering, God reveals himself. And the first aspect is that he reveals a name. And the story continued. The king came to interview them. They still insisted, still not going to do this. I believe they must have assumed God would do something to prevent them from entering into the fire. When it looks as if that was not going to happen, the fire was heated and they were about to be thrown in. They must have assumed again, maybe God would quench the fire or something would happen. But something happened there that was quite remarkable. After the venture, it went look as if all hope was lost. A new name of God was revealed there, and it was called the fourth man. The fourth man. Now, it was through that encounter, through that experience, that a name was revealed. And when we talk about the fourth man now, we can describe him as a man that shows forth. When it looked as if all hope was, is lost, the man that shows up in the midst of the fire. He reveals a name. There are several things God does through our sufferings. And that, the revelation you get of, you may know, you, you may know God as, as the God that answered by fire, the God that is always there in times of need, the ever help in times of need, our father, our mother, all those things are lovely, but sometimes it takes a fire for you, for you to have a higher revelation of the fourth one. Without the fire, you would never know God as the fourth one. As the fourth one. Their expectations must have been cut short. But we see God reveal himself. The next one. Through our hardship or pain, God reveals or releases his strength. James 1, 1 to 2. James chapter 1, 1 to 2. While we open there, in, there's something we learned in medicine. Your body becomes stronger after it has been exposed to various organisms or things that would have made you to get sick. That is why sometimes when we are, and that is the whole concept of vaccination, you would agree with me. Something is introduced to your body to make it stronger, prepared, activated, when the real harm comes. And this is also applicable in scriptures. In true pain, true sufferings, God releases strength. 
James 1, 1 to 2. James 1, 1 to 2. Let me read from here. And the Bible says, James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What makes you perfect, complete, entire is the trials. What makes your body immune to be able to defend against certain disease, illness, variant is because of what? An exposure to that similar challenge. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is what? Small. This is just an end. Encouragement. There is a suffering of the Christ. But for our own benefit, it's set to produce something in us. It's like when the COVID thing um, was going on and so on and so forth. The little mystery behind vaccination is that they put an inactivated portion or version of that same body into your system. So when the main thing comes, your body has gained defense against it. One of the things that God uses our sufferings to, to reveal unto us is what? Is strength. The next thing that he used our sufferings to reveal unto us is to bring us to a higher level of intimacy. It is intimacy. Let's look at the book of Job chapter 42 verse 5. Job chapter 42 verse 5. When we look at the life of Job, there are several reasons why we must have, why we, we can postulate of what made Job go through the things he's, he went through. But I'll show you the reason in Job chapter 42, verse 5. Now, Job, when Job was not aware of the discussion that happened in heaven before he was afflicted, we just saw that there was a scene that took place in heaven of God posting about Job to the devil, and Job was just somewhere on earth going about his business. But the lesson here is that through that, those afflictions that he suffered for Christ, there was something that God was trying to beget or produce in him. And in Job chapter 42, verse 5, Job said, now this is the last chapter, so after everything has been said and done, this was Job's conclusion. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye have what in thee. This was the goal. This was the message. This was the mission. It was not to replace everything he has lost by a double portion. It was not to give him more than he ever had. I mean, those are all material concerns or achievements. But basically, this was the achievement. At the beginning, it was not known. At the middle, it was not known. But God was trying to get, bring him to a higher level of intimacy. Before, Job only knew him by what he heard other people said about him. But through this encounter, experience, through this suffering, he got to a higher level. The Bible says he saw him with his high. It brings us to a higher level of intimacy. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Hebrews 12 verse 2. We see Jesus Christ depicting something to us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who was set before him endured the cross. And after that, affliction after those moments what he achieved was 
bigger than the shame or than the pain. Set down at the right hand of the throne of God, bringing us to a higher level of intimacy with the Father. As I conclude, let's look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 from verse 3. There are several things that God sets to achieve. Or set to reveal to us through the things we go through. Or before that, let's look at um, First Peter four. You can still keep um, the. You can still keep Matthew if you have that up. First Peter four from verse twelve. The Bible says, First Peter four from verse twelve. Beloved, I think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly, exceeding joy, that I may know him. The power of his resurrection is achieved through the fellowship, the identification of us with his sufferings. We live in a world where it's almost inevitable. That's why I said the message, it may not look like it's relevant to you today, but keep it for the future. The Bible says in John that in the world, ye will face what? Tribulation. As long as we remain in the flesh, in the world, there are things that are almost constant. But he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Matthew 11, 3 is a very remarkable verse. Time may fail us to, to go a bit further on, but I will give us a little um, detail. And said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? It's a short phrase, but and I believe when you look at that verse, you already know who is talking, or just a little quiz. Who is talking? Or who is asking the question there? Does it look familiar to us? Matthew eleven three, and said unto him, Are thou ye that should come, or do we look for another? I want to give us a, um, I know it's not a Bible study, but just that we know if I should go to the other verses or not. Who is talking there? John the Baptist. Now when you look at this question, it sounds like one that is in doubt, true or false. One that is uncertain. Now, this question came after John was thrown into prison and he was there and he was hearing of the amazing things that Jesus was doing and he sent two of his disciples with a simple message are thou he that should come or do we look for another? When we see this um, kind of question coming from John the Baptist, it expresses like this guy has been confused all along because earlier on, when he met Jesus coming to be baptized, what did he call him? Behold the Lamb of God who cometh to take it away the sin of the world. And he, he even said, I'm not worthy to tie or to lace his sandals. I'm not worthy to even baptize him. And he was a witness of the encounter that ensued when Jesus was baptized. Now, here... John asking a question that was very shocking. Are you the one to come or should we accept, expect? So everything you've been doing for so long, is it that you were blank? You were not sure what was happening? In fact, to amaze us, John was one of the few persons that from his mother's womb, he knew Jesus. Because the Bible said when this mother, Elizabeth, encountered Mary, that John in the belly leaped. What am I trying to say? We should not be so certain of what we are going to do when we are in a hard situation. And this was John speaking from prison. But the lesson here is that 
When this question was, let's go a bit further to verse 4, 5, and 6. Let me go through that quickly. Verse 4, 5, and 6. After this question came to Jesus, would have expected Jesus to be shocked and mad, like, John, you ought to know better. And said unto him, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. Simply mean, although we, that's why it's good that we are, uh, man is not God and God is not man. Because we would have looked at John with such indignation. Like, what is happening? But when you look at the situation he was talking from, you may have a little better understanding. But look at this answer. Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame work, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. This was the message he sent back to John. There was one thing significant about this message. He was just fulfilling the promise or the prophecy by prophet Isaiah. And he knew John would understand where he was coming from. The last point is true our pain. God fulfills his promise. He fulfills his promise. Through our period sufferings, God reveals his promise. God, Jesus was not mad at John. He did not shout at John. He did not caution John. He did not make John feel like he has, he's, the, he's, the, he's the worst of himself. In fact, after verse 5, we read from verse 6, 7, and 8. Jesus changed his sermon at that point and he began to preach about John. Hear what he was saying. That, that from the time of Elijah, that, please look at verse 6 and 7 and 8. That I will not quote out of place. He was trying to show you how great John was. They've not been a prophet as great as John. This was a man asking a question that made him look like he has fallen out of place. What am I trying to say? Even in the moment of suffering, God still stretched forth his hand. He still stretched forth his hand. No matter where we may be or what it may be like, we should not don't give up on God when God has not given up on you. You may be knocked down, but you are not knocked out. You may be knocked down, but not knocked out. You may be cast down, but not forsaken. Even in the moment of weakness, pain, uncertainties and doubt, God still sent a message of hope back to him. And that is the message God is bringing to us this morning. Look around you. The promises of God are being healed. One of the things that would help us remain strong is to remember the promises of God. Because that's the, that was what Jesus did in that stead. Reminded him of a promise he already knew. I pray God will give us a deepening understanding in the name of Jesus. I want us to be on our feet as we pray in the next one minute or two minutes. That God will help us to partake also in the sufferings of Christ. It's important we talk on this day about the power of his resurrection. But also, there is the other side of the coin, which is the fellowship of his suffering. And these were the two things that Paul wanted to know. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. Just in a minute or two, because of time, just talk to heaven. That Lord, help me to identify also with your suffering. The, the place we read in Peter said, the only way we can partake of the glory is, is, is by partaking also in the sufferings. When we look at a day like this, what we are celebrating or is the purpose of what he did. The purpose of what he did. Father, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, 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 help us. You can imagine even Jesus, I mean, the question he asks, Father, why have thou forsaken me? 
When the going gets, gets tough, we need the help of God. Lord, help us. Father, help us. These are tests. These are trials. These are, but the goal is to make us complete, perfect, to forge out a better version of ourselves. The one that is worthy to sit at the throne of the master. The Bible says, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And the result was that he seated down at the side of the Father. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word that have come forth. We rely on you. We look unto you. We look unto you. We look unto you. The author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, we pray that through our moment, that, and the book of Peter said that the, the, that the affliction is for a short time. It's for a while. Lord, I pray through our sufferings, you will reveal unto us a name. We pray that you will bring us to deeper intimacy. We pray that you will release strength. And we pray that you will fulfill your promise. You will fulfill your promise. The fourth man is only known through fire. He's not known on the platform of, of, of enjoyment, of sweetness. He's known through the sufferings. The fourth man. The fourth man was a revelation that the three Hebrew boys got by virtue of what they went through. And a new revelation of Christ was revealed. Before then, that name, that revelation was not given unto man. But through their personalized suffering, they, they unlock a dimension of God that was called the fourth man. Means the man that showed in the fire. Father, help us. Help us, help us, help us. Both have said, if you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. Lord, we will not fail. We will not fall. We will not flutter. We would remain firm. We would remain strong. I hand over the mic. Second Corinthians 4. Where we've read earlier, I just want to read it again. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, that's confused or uncertain, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. I pray God will help us and allow this word to continually be made in our hearts. For in Jesus' name, for in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching this video. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this simple prayer after me? The Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. I confess my sin and come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary cleanse me from all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer along with me now, I want to say congratulations to you. For more information and inquiry, please contact us via the information on the screen. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. God bless you.